yes yo welcome back to my youtube channel hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day today um today i have an interesting um story for you guys um this is for africa this is for the whole of africa whether you live in, Af in the continent of africa whether you live in um uk us um i'm sure everybody's familiar with this uh with this story okay so um if you are my new subscriber please consider uh, putting it into consideration and click on the subscribe button and then if you are my old subscribers thank you for always coming back to watch more videos um everybody um remember the story of um um alexander williams right um the 16 years old boy who was um executed uh, in 1931 that was like 91 years ago, almost a century, right? And uh, yesterday, um, it was uh, uh, the court, the same court that um, persecuted him about the murderer he did not commit. The same court yesterday um, overturned the judgment and said he was not guilty, but it's too late because this kid died 91 years ago. Um, he said, um, the black U.S. teen cleared of murder 91 years after his execution. So, um, everybody's familiar with this um, story. But before I continue, I need you to watch this video uh, for more understanding before I will read his, his, uh, his story. Watch this video and I will be right back. In 1930, received a fresh look in court today. After a two-day trial by an all-white jury 90 years ago, a black teenager was convicted and executed for the brutal murder of a white woman. Action News reporter Eliana Gomez is live outside the courthouse in media with new developments in this case. Eliana. Rick, it was a life-changing conviction that came at the age of 16 for Alexander McClay Williams, who also was the youngest person ever executed in the state of Pennsylvania nearly a century ago. And today, the attorney representing his family and his new case called it racial profiling, racially motivated, and says he was likely only accused because he was black. An egregious injustice finally revisited in Delaware County Court more than 90 years later. And it's pretty obvious that this was racial profiling at its worst. 16-year-old Alexander McClay Williams was accused of brutally stabbing his teacher, Vida Robert, at the Glen Mills School back in 1930. Attorneys tell me the victim, the judge, and the jury were all white. The teen was executed just six months after he was convicted. He was browbeaten into giving a confession, uh, and he was summarily tried and executed without even an appeal being filed. Delaware County District Attorney Jack Stolsteimer joined the family's attorney in filing a motion for a new trial, which was granted by the judge and now finally clears Alexander's name of any wrongdoing. I am happy. I am happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alexander's only living sibling, Susie Carter, testified in court surrounded by the support of her family. This was a case of uh, lethal domestic violence, trussed up to look like a race murder. Alexander's attorney at the time, William Ridley, was the first African-American member of the Delaware County Bar. His great-grandson, Dr. Sam Lemon, says he had the deck stacked against him. So he made it his mission to finish what Ridley started. This is extraordinary, uh, what's happening today. And I, and I hope it opens up a chapter, uh, a new chapter in uh, judicial history in Delaware County. And this, the family certainly had a lot to celebrate today after the judge ruled. And again, while a new trial was granted by the judge, we're told there won't be one because Alexander is no longer alive to defend himself. And we're also told there's no more existing evidence. So the judge just ruled to vacate the murder charge, exonerating him. Reporting live in media tonight, I'm Aliana Gomez. Okay, James. so after watching the video, now um, I'm sure you are more familiar with the story of this young black kid with a bright fish shot that was taken shot by the white people, by the racist people. Um, but I'm going to read um, a story to you and I'll put it on, this, on the screen so that you can see, you can read along while I'm reading the story. All right. Um, this is a story of a young man. Now, his name was um, Alexander Markley Williams, right? Um, 
He said, um, he said, um, Alisa McLean William was convicted and executed in the stabbing death of Mantron at the Glenmi School. For decades, his family contended that he was wrongly convicted, right? Uh, so this is a special, you know, back then there was no um, colored. So this was his young kid picture at the court, I guess. So he said, in 1931, Hall and all white, white on hand, all white jury took um, four hours to convince Alexander Williams, a black teenager, in the stabbing death of Mantron at the Glimmy School for boys in uh, Delaware County. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. He said, for months later, Williams, 16, was executed, becoming the youngest person in the uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania history to be put to death. His family spent his family spent um decades trying to prove his innocence, and this week, af, uh, and this week, with the help from the great grandson of the lawyer who represented him at at trial, Williams was posthumously vindicated. A Delaware County judge overturned his conviction for a crime persecutor now say he did not commit. Um, the following the following handed down Monday in the same courtroom where Williams had been convicted 91 years ago was met with the thunderous applause from his relatives, including his only surviving siblings, Susie Williams Scatter. Uh, said and the sister said, I am just happy that it's finally turned, that, turned out that the way it should have been in the beginning. William Scatter, 92 years, told the inquiry, we just wanted it overturned because we knew he was innocent and now we want everyone else to know it too. For, for Sam Lemon, it was a victory that also honored his great-grandfather, William Ridley. The currently first black attorney, who was um, who was given just ten dollar and a few weeks to make a case that William Dinoki Vinda Rabore, a white matron at the Glimmies, who was found dead inside a cabin at um, the school, she has been stabbed forty-seven times with an high spink. Two of her ribs were broken and her eyes were fractured. Uh, Robin S. Osman, who had a history of domestic violence against her, called the police to report finding her dead. He was last. He was the last person to be seen with her. Court records shows, but was quickly run hard as the killer's suspicion fell on Williams, a teen who had been uh, sent to Glimmies after committing crimes that uh, included setting a fire that destroyed. A ban and cost $25,000 in damage and burglarizing a post office at the age of 12. Um, uh, George, George, um, George W. Roger uh, from Feed had sentenced William to an uh, indeterminate stay at Glamis, a facility that Lemon said, it, Lemon said was little more than a J. For children at that time, at the time, four years later, the same judge would sentence William to death in Robron's Mondra. Right? Say so Lemon, now 17, spent many childhood summer after with his grandmother, listening to the story about a father, Ringley, the lawyer. He became uh, fasc uh, fascinated by William case, a rare and troubling clause in the great grandfather legal career. And so about 30 years ago, he said, Lemon, a college administrator who lived in media, began digging into the case and discover evidence that, that convinced uh, him William was not guilty. For one thing, he said, persecutor failed to introduce the key evidence at trial, including a man bloody handprint that was found at the scene. And William had been busy working elsewhere on the ground at the time of uh, robbery death. To have committed the crime, Lemon said the thing 
would have needed the supernatural ability to stop time, attack the metro, and return to his um, work site. So this was the picture of the of the lady that was killed. Her name was Miss Vida Robbery. I mean Robert, attractive 32 years old woman matron of Glen Mays Reform School for Boys. Uh, Mendia PA was stabbed to death with an ice pink. The murder took place at college, <coughs> excuse me guys, near the main school building. Police believe a woman committed uh, the crime. So uh, let me continue with the guys. He said, Lemon discovered this and other details as has a poor over historical record, including a translate of William um, short try in 1931, and he could not help but wonder whether race play a factor in jury decision to convene um, William in just a few hours. Of course, race, uh, race played a, a big role over there. Because I'm sure if he was a white kid bent by, back then, they wouldn't treat him the way he was treated. So let me continue reading that. On this, uh, this was a stain on the court, a legal lashing in the sinks, which is a harsh thing to say, but that's what it was. Lemon said, people are looking now not just at classic civil rights cases from the South, but also in the North where race play a factor in the unjust sentences. About several years ago, he enlisted the help of Anthony Robert Keller, who worked pro pro bono to help him try to get the case overturned. Last summer, Keller and Slemon met District Attorney Jack uh, St Stontema, hoping that he might take an interest in the case. Stontema agreed to take a look, uh, take a look, uh, he agreed to took a look at the, at the Take a look and uh, try transit during his summer vacation in Cape May. It was just an alignment of the stars. Lemon said, "The right time, the right time, right place, and uh, the right change in politics in our country." So Stemmers was the first democratic Democrat. <clears throat> it was the first Democrat. Um, to be elected by the district. I'm sorry about those uh, hiccup guys. As I was reading, a call was coming in, so I was a little bit distracted, right? And um, and he said, Anthony in the county history. He said, um, so Sterman brought the case to the president, George Kevin Kelly, um, who agreed to hear joint motion from um, so Sterman and Keller to have the case reopened. In an interview Thursday, Sir Thomas said several aspects of the persecution troubled him. He, him. he cited um, sub, subversion of due process right, including what he called uh, a bro beating confession that has seen uh, give a police after repeating interrogation without lawyer or an adult in presence. Just you can imagine that. He stoned the on the statement, and he said. That Williams was sent to electric chair just a few months after his conviction without any appeal filed by the East Anthony. In, uh, in the criminal justice system, we are in business of making people's lives better. That's what we believe every day and uh, we come to work. Um, Stormer said, but as long as humans are involved in this process, there will always be error, of course. So if we can identify issues, and right those wrong. It's in our interest to do that, of course. So he said during the hearing Monday, the lawyer laid her three decades of research and asked um, that the judge overturn Williams' conviction. They were joined in that effort by Robert's great grand niece, Teresa Smisher, who had done her own research and who testified from her home in Michigan that. She believed Williams was not guilty, right? I know that um, Alexa did not commit the murder, Smith has said. The murder, uh, uh, Smith has said, calling the thing a handy scapegoat for persecutor at that time. 
So this picture you're seeing right here is um Susie Williams' sister. This is the only surviving sister, and she's 92 years old, right? Her name is Cody. Her family is overjoyed, feel vaccinated now that her brother's name has been cleared. So this is the picture of her sister, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm happy at least her sister was still alive to witness <clears throat> to witness this. You know, I, I believe she's ninety two. She's she must be. She now she's she must be very 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 tired. And uh, even if she dies today, this will give her a, 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 um, a peace of mind wherever she goes after after life. And uh, this one will give her a rest of mind. Also, knowing truly where that a brother that was killed ninety one years ago was truly innocent, as she has always assumed for almost a century, right? And uh, let me continue with you guys. Kelly on his try final day, final day as um, Delaware County's President Judge concluded the evidence withheld by the prosecutor could have changed the outcome of the trial. He seemed particularly troubled by bloody hand print. In short, it appeared with the imposition of his death sentence, Mr. William was legally abandoned by the court system and left to die in the hand of the state, Kelly said. He granted the request for a retrial and uh, sustained and immediately withdrawn the charge. In, in so doing, Lemon said the judge and persecutor rising a wrong right, a wrong that had wounded many people across multiple generations. It free astonish. He said it feels like a great weight has been lifted off my shoulder. Um, I am not um, restful in any way, but that was a whole, that was a huge burden to carry for so many years so like but the thing is that but my question is do you think the wrong convention from black people in the united states has stopped after 91 years and the answer is no as i speak right now in 2022 there are still many wrong black people in the prison all over the united states right for me, I always say that, sorry, to, I mean, sorry if you are offended by this word. I always tell you that the black and white people are not the same, and we will never be the same. The earlier you know this, the more peace you will have. Because stop saying, um, we are human, it does not matter the color. Bro, the colors matters. The color matters a lot. If the color doesn't matter, Africa will not be where they are today. I mean, God created this everybody and put them in different continents. I, I believe God never made any mistakes. And people will say, um, we all have red blood. Bro, before God created man, he created animal according to the white man book, which, we, which all of you called the Bible. According to the white man book, it said God created animal, and when God created animal, he created crocodile, lion, cheetah, antelope, tortoise, fish, and it separated all these animals. So what makes, it, what makes you think God creates every human with different colors and different mindsets to live together? Let me tell you, if you go to the jungle or the forest, if a lion see an antelope, they will start fighting. The antelope will run, right? If, um, if a snake see a rat or a rabbit, the snake will run. I mean, the rabbit or the rat is going to have to run because they are not family, even though they were created by one god so it's as it's like that as uh, for humans so i don't know where you get that mentality from where the because the white man has brainwashed you for you not to be able to fight for how they treated you back then so they are now consoling your soul telling you um we are all the same we are never the same i will end this video right here guys like you said uh, like you all know my uh, my name still remains the habit of nations and uh, if this is your first time please um put it into consideration uh, click on the um subscribe button um for my hood for my hood and subscribers i really appreciate you peace peace god bless africa